Hello and welcome back to Everyday Prepping or Vardagsprepping in Swedish. So for today's episode, uh, sorry that it has taken so long. Um, I've had lots of other stuff to do. <laughs> But for this episode, um, I actually want to speak about um, food and food storage. As you may know, um, We had the National Preparedness Week in Sweden and the focus there was actually food. And we had the opportunity to interview uh, Ralf Hensel, which is the managing director for uh, Convar Foods. So if you don't know about Convar Foods, uh, please check out the other videos that we made uh, where we created uh, full meals of, um, uh, but only using freeze-dried ingredients, which is quite uh, Cool. But uh, for now, I just want to talk about uh, how I built my uh, prepping food, my food prepping, how that's built up. Um, and I, I, am, I'm, um, I like to, to talk about the layers of uh, preparedness. So for this one, um, you actually need to start the layer with um, uh, being able to make food. So if you're one of those who uh, only get the food delivered, uh, please start uh, cr creating or cooking your own meals because that's a sound way. It's a good way to also decrease your costs when it comes to food. So that's kind of layer zero. The first layer is then to have um, a pantry where you stock up on, on things that you actually use in your daily cooking. So maybe you have flour, maybe you have sugar, salt, spices, pasta, uh, maybe some cans of tomato, uh, crushed tomatoes and, and things like that. And also that you have a well-stocked fridge and freezer. Um, that's kind of layer one. And, and I hope that most people uh, have it that way because that's actually, if you have that, you're already on a, on a good way to, to reach um, one week's preparedness, uh, if you think about it. So the other layer, or layer two, is uh, a secondary pantry, or a se um, kind of a, I call it my store. If I'm running out of sugar, I can go into my store, and I don't need to pay because I've already prepared. So that's the buffer. Um, In the pantry, you may have like one, maybe two of each. So maybe two uh, buckets of small buckets of salt or something like that. In the pantry, um, in the storage, or in in the second, the secondary uh, buffer, you would actually have like two or three of each kind. And that I think that's the most difficult part for for apartment preppers because they don't know where to put it because apartments tend to get crowded. So I'm going to show you a picture of my secondary, my buffer. Uh, I have one in the apartment that I live in, and it looks like this. And then I have another other in my, uh, the other apartment, which I, where I record stuff. So here's tomatoes, pasta, oil, uh, powdered milk, Pasta, 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 salt, and stuff like that. So that's the second layer. And, and um, if you had a look at the amount of pasta I, I bought, that was actually a stupid way of preparing because I heard on the news, or my wife heard that, that Italy would, uh, they were facing uh, crop failure or their, their crops, their, their harvest of um, wheat. Uh, was at an all-time low, <laughs> I spent some money to um, buy the pasta that I like, just to have it uh, next year. So pasta has, um, you may already know this, but you can store pasta as it is for like two or three years. Uh, the only thing is that you might get bugs in them, <clears throat> which is not so nice. Um, and how I built this, um, if, we, if we don't take into account the huge amount of pasta I had, so my uh, buffer is actually built by, instead of buying one that I need for my, to replace in my cabinet, I buy two. 
Um, and I don't need to do that with every, everything, but just get the mindset to actually, you know, buy a little bit more and fill up that buffer uh, step by step. That's uh, economic. Uh, and also, if you, if you um, uh, buy extra, that means you never buy something that you don't need or want or like. Uh, so for the tomatoes, uh, I only buy the brand that we, we like. Um, this is where, where people think differently from me. I tend to prep the things that I actually use in my daily life. Whilst others who may be preparing for more serious crisis, crises, uh, they may buy things that they don't need, uh, but which has a longer storage uh, time. So that's the, the kind of the first layers. Um, and in a, in a coming video, I'm going to show you how I'm building my um, last layer. That's the storage, the long time storage of food. And I used the same uh, method to um, buy this. So I don't buy a lot every time, but um, I tend to buy, when it comes to flour, I tend to buy, maybe I buy three uh, bags of flour. One for, for the, um, my cabinet, one for the buffer if I need to fill up, and then one to store um, and to, that I will then uh, use uh, a method of storing them for a longer time. So I'm going to show you that. My apartment is quite messy right now because I'm I'm changing the water. <laughs> I'm uh, uh, storing lots of things, but this is uh, I'm building the buffer for that I'm going to put in bags for long time storage. And um, so this is um, flour, ordinary flour and some pasta, potato, starch, basically baking soda. And I will be putting them into Milo bags. And I'm going to add a oxygen absorber to those. But I will be showing you that in a later video, how, how I do. This is part of um, the, the remains of what... Um, oh well, the leftovers that I didn't use when we made the, the food. Uh, with freeze-dried from Convar Foods. So I actually took, <clears throat> since I opened the lid, um, I actually, uh, well, it's not a, a, a good environment to store food anymore. So I, I put, poured the, the contents into new Mylar bags. Uh, and as you can see here, I've, um, I've stored a lot of, a lot of um, different things in uh, Mylar bags. And I keep them in the basement because it's um, colder there. So the basics of, of uh, long time storage is that, <clears throat> say if you put flour into a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber and then they seal it, uh, what will happen then is that the oxygen absorber, here comes the surprise, it will absorb oxygen. <laughs> uh, so that means that if there is anything harmful or if there are any insects egg insect eggs and stuff like that they will die and the food will store longer so um, from from an ordinary bag of flour would would be uh, you maybe you should use that within a year so when you put it in <clears throat> so when you put it in the mylar bag uh, it actually stores for five years and then uh, if i if that's in room temperature. And then if I uh, put it in a cooler environment, I think it's somewhere around five to six degrees cooler. I actually double the storage time. So now I am in the basement where I'm going, where you saw, which you saw, um, those bags of flour, actually, they're good to go for 10 years. And in 10 years, uh, depending on the crisis that I'm prepping for, uh, but I mean, um, even wars tend to be shorter than 10 years. And um, well, let's hope we never get to see that again. All right, so um, let's just repeat. 
uh, layer zero is for you to start cooking yourself if you don't do that please stop using uh, services to get food delivered because that's expensive and also you don't learn to how uh, learn how to cook food which makes your options uh, limited when it come if you have been storing food so that's layer zero layer one is to have a, a stocked cabinet a full stock cabinet with food the foods you that you or the stuff you, you use to make food and then also the fridge and freezer uh, should be containing the food you eat and as a tip if you don't if for the freezer if you don't um, if you don't have that much food uh, remember that uh, why I say you, you should have a full stocked fridge as well, freezer as well is because if the power goes out, uh, the more things that are frozen, the longer the time it will keep uh, the temperature. So if you have a somewhat full freezer, but it's not really full, then you can actually um, f uh, take bottles of water and freeze them. But just um, uh, add three fourths into the uh, water. So, because then it's, uh, it won't uh, crack or explode or stuff like that. And then you also have clean water if something happens. <clears throat> and then you fill up the freezer and you're, uh, you have prolonged um, the time that the um, temperature is intact. So this is layer one. And then we go to layer two, which is having a buffer. Um, two or three times what you have in your cabinet or covered and then we come to layer three I guess which is your long time uh, stored food and, for, and I've only been talking about dry goods like flour sugar salt etc uh, I, I guess there is a fourth layer which would be ready um, freeze-dried food um, which they uh, they can um, keep for like 25, 30 years, but they are extremely expensive. So I would not recommend that you go down that, that path uh, the first thing you do. So please start uh, filling your cabinet, building the buffer, do it um, steps, small baby steps at a time so you don't ruin yourself. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I will be getting back to packing with Mylar bags and I also want to show you uh, I restarted my hydroponic uh, gardening, so I'm going to show you that as well. I hope you are interested in that. So until we see each other again, please take care, prep on and stay safe.